Hello everyone! Welcome to this game! Ah, that was kind of a neat sound effect. It's like I'm playing a video game. Oh look! I'm playing a video game! This is Angels with Scaly Wings. And no doubt the title is inspired by Angels with Filthy Souls from Home Alone. Anyway, this here is a visual novel. Not the first visual novel that I'll have ever played. Last year I played The Pirate's Fate, which um, was kind of a gut-punchy visual novel, and if this game is anything like that one, I expect my gut to be punched during this playthrough as well. Should be interesting though. The premise is that you are a human ambassador from Earth sent through a portal to a world of dragons. Yeah, th this game unfortunately has the Animal Crossing Syndrome, where everybody else gets to be dragons and you get stuck being the one that has to play as the human character. Now, nah, well, the premise is interesting enough. I wanted to play this game, and so I am playing this game. I mean, look at all these dragons! The fact that we're playing a game with all these dragons, most of them good guys? gonna be very interesting i feel like so let's not waste any time let's go ahead and get started detecting user profile user profile not found please enter your name okay uh we'll go with erica choose a color Magenta. The thought of curiosity. What are the other colors? Gold, silver, brass, bronze, copper, olive, brown. Wow, you got plenty of options for colors. But we'll go with magenta. Because pink is my favorite color. Does this look right? Yes. User profile confirmed. I gotta click the screen. Before we start, please review the following information. Controls, left stick, or left click, or enter to advance text. Press space to advance text only. This is useful to avoid making a selection by mistake. Good to know. I don't know how sensitive this cursor is going to be, or if I'm like clicking off screen somewhere. I have played a game before where clicking off screen counted as a click on screen. So yeah, I'll, I'll go ahead and just use the space bar. Escape or right click brings up the menu. F toggles full screen. We're not going full screen. Okay, we can view past messages. That's good. Skip messages. I won't be doing that. Won't be taking screenshots. Won't be hiding the text window. Actually, I might do that, in case there's a really good imagery that I want to look at. Let me make note of that real quick. If you wish to view this information again, do so from the main menu. That would be all. The year is 20XDX. Oh, I didn't know we were playing Mega Man. Only recently has humanity discovered a portal that leads into a different world, populated with a race of intelligent talking dragons. I was one of the few to travel to this world. But maybe I should start at the beginning. It all began when we discovered a strange device in the middle of nowhere during one of our expeditions. A portal. Now we're playing with portals. I had heard about similar technology before, though that had been more on an experimental level. From what I knew, other portals had been created in the past and were under consideration for mass application. As for this one in particular, though, we did not know who had built it, nor when, or why we found it in the wilderness where we did. What was more exciting to us was the fact that it was... functional. After our first tests, 
We found there was someone else on the other side who was in possession of a similar portal, and our attempts at communication through letters were successful. But in the end, the machine's extraordinary demand for power meant we needed to act quickly, as we wouldn't be able to keep the portal open much longer. Oh boy, I can only imagine how much power such a thing would require. When we made this known to the other side, we received a very unexpected reply. A letter of invitation. After some deliberation, it was decided to accept their hospitality and send a person to the other side. There was an individual who took the job almost immediately. Is that supposed to be me? No, that's Reza in is queer, though. If you say so. I knew him. Or rather, had known him. We attended the same school back then, and even had a few classes together. We never really were very close friends, but we talked to each other occasionally and hung around with the same crowd sometimes. However, we still went our separate ways in the end. I wasn't sure what to think about the whole thing, but he had to have known what he was doing. He certainly was brave. Either that or just very, very foolish. Show of hands. A portal has opened up and you don't know where it goes. Do you volunteer to go through it? I'm hesitant. I'm going to let somebody else go first and then maybe we'll get the portal working again. If it's really cool on the other side, then I'll go. Maybe that's the story here. While I wasn't sure which, his courage was applauded by others. And after all, he couldn't possibly have known who or what would await him at the other end of the portal. And if he did meet someone there, who knew what kinds of intentions they might have? Maddie says, maybe, tie me with a rope or such. Not a bad idea. Intentions, not that any speculations on our part would have made a difference. When the day finally came, through he went, with applause echoing across the area, equipped only with the clothes he wore, his multi-tool, a gun, and a device on his wrist that acted as a PDA. Then we waited. The crowd that was applauding him slowly dispersed when the enthusiasm died down, as there was nothing for us to do but wait and speculate. Approximately eight hours later, we received our first message from him. While we had assumed the portal led to another in a different country, or maybe on a different continent, the reality turned out to be much more... foreign. The situation he described to us was so outlandish that we initially took it as a joke. A very bad joke, maybe, with even worse timing and no punchline at all. It soon became clear to us, though, that we may just have made one of the most important discoveries since the dawn of mankind. Finding the portal had been remarkable in itself, but this took it to a completely different level. From what he described about the place, or more accurately, its inhabitants, we surmised it could not be a part of Earth at all. We called them dragons, because according to Reza, that's what they were. Or at least what they resembled most. I wonder what they call themselves. Even though we found it hard to believe, it had been these dragons who sent us all the letters. And what Reza found on the other side of the portal was a whole civilization of them. They could talk, write books, had buildings and electricity. In many ways, their society was actually very similar to our own. So, who are they? And where was this place? Could they be aliens? Our speculations led us to conclude otherwise. After all, we knew about the existence of thousands of planets, millions of light years away that may have been theoretically habitable. Yet even then, we had never found conclusive proof in regards to actual alien life forms. Some people brought up quantum mechanics and parallel universes, 
But in the end, all of this was just conjecture and an ultimately fruitless endeavor, since we neither had the means nor the resources to explore these possibilities in greater detail. In other words, eh, let's just roll with it. I think there's just one more thing worth mentioning before I move on. The previous isolation had been mutual. They hadn't known about any other intelligent life form beyond their own. Their portal had only recently been discovered and was a technology previously unknown to them. And just as, as we had myths about dragons, they had myths about us. Okay, theory time. Earth has theories about dragons because dragons wound up visiting Earth and likewise the other way around. The portals were probably placed by aliens. That was what we knew about them so far, and as interesting as learning those things and abating their cultural significance was, we didn't really know what we should make of it all. You know, it actually makes me wonder. We have legends about dragons, and we have people wishing to be dragons. I myself tend to be a raccoon dragon. Because why not? It makes me wonder, though, in their world, do they have people wanting to be humans? Are there humans in the furry equivalent of the dragon's furry fandom? Let me try that again. Are there humans in the dragon equivalent of the furry fandom? Rua says raccoon human. Technically speaking, wouldn't that actually just be a furry, though? Hmm. Or maybe a Nico sort of raccoon. Probably. Anyway, Reza apparently was sure of what he was doing, though, as he eventually let us know that they had agreed on a trade. We were to give them a few of our PDA devices, which contained vast amounts of knowledge, dwarfing even that of encyclopedias. In return, they would supply us with generators. Overall, they didn't seem as technologically advanced as we had been, but they did surpass us in that one aspect. Their means of generating energy seemed... sustainable. Not only that, but evidently also quite efficient. We certainly would be able to put technology like that to good use, and trading mere past knowledge of the human race for something more... tangible? It was a good call on his part. That was where I came in. My prior experience in both biology and so sociology made me a good fit to deliver our PDA devices for the trade. And while in the Dragon's world, waiting for the prototypes of our generators to be manufactured by them, I would act as an ambassador on humanity's behalf. What a way to make a first impression by a display of mutual goodwill. Everyone's benefits and everyone... Everyone benefits and everyone goes home happy. All is well. At least, that was the plan. Despite the images that living, talking dragons might conjure up in some people's minds, I didn't even think of bringing a weapon myself, considering that they were reportedly friendly and peaceful enough. There was no need for me to fear potential ill intentions like Reza did when he had stepped into unknown territory and acting as humanity's ambassador. I had to do my best to uphold a high standard in fostering his diplomatic relationship. When the time came for me to step through the portal, all my mental preparedness vanished. My anxiousness was fueled by all the questions lurking in my head, just as the machine started to do its work. Would it hurt? That would definitely be my first question. No, no, it would be my second question. But would it hurt would definitely be my question as soon as I start going through it. Is it like literally walking through a door, or would it be... My molecules being torn apart and reassembled on the other side. Hopefully not the latter, that just sounds scary. You will never see me get on a Star Trek portal, I tell you what.
What if they really weren't so friendly and just made Reza write those letters with the pretense of appearing friendly, only to lure us into the den of man-eating monsters and certain doom, with us ending up as nothing more than a tasty afternoon snack? I suppose the good news is, eventually, everybody I left behind will wise up that something's amiss. Bad news is, I'd be made an example of something amiss. Maybe I should have brought a weapon after all. Suddenly, I felt a shiver coursing throughout my whole body and beyond when it disintegrated as if every cell, every atom of my body was torn from me and pulled into a different direction. That does sound uncomfortable. I saw darkness and light, painting patterns in the stars as I traveled, and images rapidly flashed before me of things unseen and unspoken. Both horrifying and beautiful, it was an experience unlike any other, yet over in just a split second. Then it was dark. Gosh dang it, I died. I could only see a patch of lighter color contrasting with its dark surroundings as my vision started to clear. Its edges got sharper as the patch of light slowly took shape, giving me this distinguished outline of a reptilian head and an array of horns sprouting from it. Ah, here we go! Definitely spent a lot of time on that black screen. Nice to see some imagery at last. Also, just had a thought. It's too bad this isn't one of those portals that accommodates your form to the other world. Walking through the portal into a dragon world does not change you into a dragon. <laughs> Maddie says he's a cutie. You know what? He is a cutie. He was a cutie dragon. And as I could see... And as I could now see, a dragon who not only had a pair of round glasses, but also wore a burgundy tie around its neck. In the name of our people, I bid you welcome. If I may introduce myself, I am Remy, your guide and ambassador, a rep representative of our council. The dragon spoke! It was one thing to have heard and read about this, but something else entirely to have one standing in front of me, in flesh and blood. And tongue. It was good that all my mental preparedness had disappeared when I was teleported, because nothing could have prepared me for this. Rura is asking, do you remember Fur Will Fly, the webcomic? Yep, I read that one. Is it the one where... No, I'm thinking of another one. Which one was Fur Will Fly? I've read it, but I can't remember which one it was specifically. I've read a lot of rep web comics. Oh yeah, that one. Human ends up in a furry world. Oh, that was a good one. And then it was followed by that sequel comic about the mouse girl, but that got cancelled because of some infighting between owners of characters. That was really unfortunate. That was my favorite webcomic. Yeah, coming up Violet. Anyway, moving on. Sorry, I imagine you might still feel the effects of the teleportation. Drowsiness or weakness is not unusual, as is fainting and spontaneous emptying of your bowels, bladder, or stomach. How do you feel? Hopefully not, like, emptying my bowels. Rendered speechless, I had totally forgotten that I was shouldering the burden of representing my people to them as well. So much for being professional, but at least he gave me a good excuse for my blunder. I think I'm alright. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe we should go before it gets too dark. Come with me, please. 
So I followed the dragon, not straying too far from him, as the sun had already departed for the day and the remaining light diminished by the minute. Some footstep sounds in the grass ground. It is getting hard to see where I'm going. Sorry about that. We had a good reason to schedule your arrival like this. We did not want you to be ambushed by a crowd, so we had to keep your exact time and date of arrival secret. I imagine being surrounded by dragons would be kind of imposing. I wonder how big these dragons are. Thanks. I suppose an event like this would make me a celebrity of sorts. It would be the same if one of you came to us. That's quite an understatement. Some people here are rather superstitious. They might regard you or any of your kind as... divine, I suppose. I mean, I would totally accept divine. It's the other possibility that I would not be fond of. If human lore in the dragon world is anything like dragon lore in the human world. Really? How so? We do have certain myths that involve humans, and as such... Oh, I suppose the history lesson will have to wait for another time. Here we are. Okay, but you owe me. By this point, it had gotten so dark that I could barely make out the building before us. I briefly wondered whether, whether they might have street lights elsewhere, or they just did not require any due to possible enhanced eyesight or night vision. I could vaguely see the dragon, his light color still visible within the blackness that engulfed the area, rear up and manipulate the door handle with one of his forepaws. I do like that this seems to be a society of dragons who are having various amounts of technology and modernization, and they walk on all fours. That sounds like it would be a fun society to be a part of. I'm kind of fascinated with the idea of walking on all fours. Interestingly, they seem to have normal furniture. That is a small chair over there on the right. I wonder how they sit in it. I can just imagine a dragon sitting in that chair like... Oh, one of those dogs who starts out as a small puppy but then gets really big but doesn't know that they're big and try to sit on your lap anyway? Hinges creaking, the door opened, and with the flick of a switch, the apartment was flooded with light, blinding me after all the time we had just spent without it. This is where you will live for the time being. It is fully stocked, but in case you need anything else, I left you a note with a few phone numbers. It is getting rather late, so I will have to take my leave now. In any case, someone will come and meet you tomorrow morning. Thank you, Remy. Have a good night. As an aside, I am terrible at remembering names, so I'm glad my character is going to be able to remember names. Although that's not going to stop me from writing them down in my notes. Remy, White Dragon. I assume this might be the only White Dragon, so I won't really go into too much detail. Until we meet again. With a nod, Remy left the apartment, mindful enough to close the door behind himself. Surveying the room, I considered the events that had just transpired as my gaze met the window. I could see movement outside, and as I drew closer, or drew nearer, startled, I could hear footsteps in the grass moving away quickly. Assuming it must have been the dragon I just met, I thought nothing of it as I went to bed and slowly succumbed to the sweet allure of sleep overdue. Oh sure, I assume it's the dragon that I just met, but I am assuming it's somebody else. I spent a few moments thinking about my role, my mission, and what it meant to be here now.
Oh, we get our first choice. I felt the responsibility placed on my shoulders, or I was eager for the adventure to come. I definitely feel the responsibility. This is kind of nerve nerve wracking. Maddie says, honestly, I'd be a bit of both. Oh yeah, there's definitely excitement about being around here, but... Oh boy, that sudden realization that I'm not here for a vacation. Now here I was, a stranger in a strange land, as I only began to feel the weight of the burden that lay upon me, the pressure of my task and the expectations I would have to meet in representing a species, culture, and civilization. So many would depend on it. Yet I did not even know where the only human contact I had currently was. I was alone. Chapter 1. Inception. I awoke from uneasy dreams, looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. Just for a moment, I wondered where I was before the events of last night all came back to me. Has anybody ever had that happen before? Like you go out on a trip and waking up after your first night in the hotel, you're wondering, where am I? Oh yeah, I'm on vacation. Maddie says, yeah, I'm not really sure that's happened to me personally. Hard to remember. It's been a long time since I've actually been on vacation. After a good stretch, I looked around the room illuminated by the sunlight coming in from the window. Outside, in the distance, the portal I had emerged from proudly stood on the peak of a small hill. Oh, this is a nice song playing. Getting ready, I noticed something lying on the table. It was the note Remy had left for me in case I needed anything. Along with his own home phone and work number, there were also some numbers for delivery of food and other necessities, as well as emergency and even janitorial services. He had certainly thought of everything, even though I now had to wonder what a dragon plumber might look like. I'm also wondering if the person who invented the telephone in the dragon world was also named bell because i tell you that is a really convenient name for somebody who invented a telephone considering telephones ring uh, speaking of ringing my musings were interrupted when the doorbell rang when I opened the door, I was met by another dragon. Apparently, this is a clothing optional world. I approve. You think they would mind if I wound up walking around naked? Maybe I don't need to wear clothes in this world. Maddie says, Eee! So this is Sebastian. Yes, I also want to hug Sebastian. Kind of a brown raptor? Lacking wings. Suddenly wondering if dragons in this world are able to fly. Oh, he's security as well. Hello, you must be Erica. I'm Sebastian, and I'll be your escort. Or security, I suppose. Usually I work for the police, though. Nice to meet you. Somebody's nervous about meeting a human. He seemed a lot smaller than Remy, and when he somewhat nervously extended his arm towards me, I noticed he apparently only walked on his hind legs, the two forelimbs instead having distinct arms, hands, and fingers. <laughs> I 
Um, that's, um, okay, uh, that's an option. I, I don't know that I'm necessarily willing to rush a relationship here, so I will, I'll just go ahead and shake it. When I took his hand into mine to shake it gently, I could feel the individual bumps and scales on his rough skin. I love that that detail was added. Nice to meet you too, Sebastian. So, where are you taking me? Straight to business, eh? We're going to visit the plant where they are making your generators. We have some news for you, or so I've heard. Reza will be there too. I'm gonna make note of that name, cause I got a little confused when we met Remy, and it's like, that's an RE name. Is he my friend? Turned into a dragon? No, they just have similar names. That is human friend. Maddie says, gonna just say, scales feels super nice. Got to hold a constrictor once. I'd imagine a snake scales would feel different than like a lizard scales, though. Because snakes have got to be all smooth and stuff so they can slither around. By the way, good news, as far as sensitivity with mouse clicking, clicking over to my nose doesn't do anything, clicking the game on the test part doesn't do anything. I gotta be making sure about not to click on the game screen when switching back to it, though. I gotta click on the test bar, otherwise I pre-regress the text. Sounds great! Just follow me. All the more reason not to play this game in full screen. Huh, nice park. I gotta try this out. If I press H, yeah, that gets rid of the text and the faded background. While we walked, I was under the impression we were purposefully avoiding the busier parts of the town instead of Instead, straying towards the edges and small alleys as to not garner too much attention. Even then, we got the occasional stare. After just a couple of minutes, we arrived at our destination where we were met by Reza, as well as yet another dragon, a vicious-looking beast that didn't stay too close to him. Yep, dragons in this world, kind of big. Not like mythologically big, but... Standing human height. Hey. Reza, long time no see. How true that is. Good to finally see another human face around here. What a coincidence to have you of all people show up. Yeah, guess those degrees aren't so useless after all. By the way, who's your friend? Just my bodyguard, same as yours. Don't bother with him, he doesn't talk much. Hmm. Win in a fight with mine? Looks grumpy. Just like you. I don't know if I'll choose that last option. I don't even know my friend. He looks grumpy. That's what he always looks like. And yes, that does mean he's always grumpy. The two dragons exchanged a few words as I met the gaze of the larger teneb ten tenebrous dragon a few paces from us. Sebastian turned towards me and spoke up again. Hey Erica, this is Maverick. Hi Maverick! I'm writing your name down. Grey Dragon Body Guard for Reza. Maddie says Maverick. That's probably foreshadowing if I've ever heard it.
It's not a word that I use very often, so it's not something that I necessarily recognize the foreshadowing of. For now, though, nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. Don't just... Just don't expect me to give you any special treatment like everyone else is, and we'll be good. What are you talking about? So you're saying you haven't noticed the stairs and how they all treat you like you're the next messiah or something? No, I just thought... We're not the ones making a big deal out of this. You are. We're just here to get what we agreed on and then we'll be gone. If anything, I'd actually prefer if you left us alone, but you're the one who insists on following me around wherever I go. A growl escaped the darker dragon's trembling lips as he bared his teeth at Reza. Alright, alright, that's quite enough. Let's just go, I'll go inside already, shall we? So Maddie says, a maverick is someone who doesn't play by the rules, slash plays by his own rules, etc. Okay. After you. The crisis was quickly averted as we entered the building, which was characterized by its many floors, high ceilings, and long, narrow hallways as the passion led us to our destination. And we got another cute dragon. This one clearly a girl. There you are. I was waiting for you. Another raptor type dragon. So this is kind of a slightly too real thought, but you think there's racial inequality in a world where there's winged dragons and raptor dragons? Wait a minute, I thought we were going to meet the guys from production. What are you doing here? They're only coming in later today, so you'll just have to make do with me. I see. Well, Erica, this is Anna. She kind of manages this building. No, actually, she's more involved with the research wing, rather than production and engineering. Hi, Anna. I'm gonna write your night down, uh, name down. Would you say that is orange or red? Kind of red, rose, red, orange, brick. Like a pale brick. Whatever. I don't need to be too detailed in my notes. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I have something for you, by the way. It'll take them a while to make all the generators we promised, but we've got one for you here. Feel free to send it home and give it a test. Good idea, because we don't want that portal getting shut up and me being stranded in this world. Or do we? Hmm. That's great. I'll take it. Looks a little small if you ask me. Don't underestimate its power. Oh, and do be careful not to drop it. Sure. I'll be waiting outside while you do your thing, Erica. I suppose I'll wait for you outside as well. What thing? Oh, have you brought the PDA? Of course. Here you go. Alright, now to give this thing a test run. The PDA lit up as her hand swiftly moved around its interface in calculated motions. By the way, would you consider letting me run some tests on you as well? It would only take a drop of your blood. Ugh, I don't like needles. I bet you he's gonna give me the option. What? Why? I work in biology, so obviously this kind of thing would be very interesting to us. I'd share the results with you, of course. Oh, tough call. I have gotten blood tests before, so it's not something... 
that I'm completely against? I am, though, very curious to find out what these dragons would be able to do with my blood sample. I also bet this is going to wind up being a major decision here that could possibly alter the storyline. So, hesitantly, sure, why not? Great! She was quick to produce a small device from a drawer, which from a glance reminded me a lot of a test tube. Now, if you would give me your hand, please. As I reached out to her, she took my hand into hers before she pressed the device into the back of my hand. I winced as pain jolted through my hand. Something sharp drove itself through my skin, and shortly afterwards, a droplet of blood was sucked into the tube attached to the small needle. At least it's hidden. I can't look whenever I get my blood drawn. I have to look away. Thanks. You're welcome? Yeah, that is pretty much my sort of response. I just know that she has a pencil in her ear and that is adorable. Achievement unlocked. Blood donation. You gave Anna your blood. Looks like your PDA is good, by the way. So we're just about done here. Ruha says, I imagine that drawing blood on thick dragon scales is a lot harder. I wonder if that's why they do it on their hands. Maybe the scales are thinner on their hands. Either way, my skin on my hand is probably thinner than a dragon's hand, so... Ow! Anyway, and since we're both in biology, it would, could be interesting if you want to meet me some other time as well. Here's my number. Alright. See you soon. Well, that was interesting. Did she ask you for your blood too? Yeah. Did she give it to her? Yeah? Oh. Well, it's your choice. We got no idea what they might do with it, though. Okay, I'm guessing then that you didn't? Good, then I don't feel stupid for also giving mine. I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? I'm all for it. I can't stand early mornings like this. That shouldn't be a problem. There's a cafe not far from here. What do you say, Mavers? I wouldn't mind, a grab, mind to grab a bite myself. That settles it, then. I'm reading the sign. Uncle... Mugens. Coffee, donuts... Something... Burgers. You know what? There's an easy way to do this. Okay, Uncle Mugens. Coffee, donuts, pasta, burgers. Today's menu is also empty, I notice. I guess we're early. Luckily for us, the cafe was mostly empty when we arrived, as it was still pretty early in the day. Reza was quick to lead me to a table for two, prompting the dragons to get one of their own at the other side of the restaurant. I'm kind of hoping they actually show the dragons seated. Let's take a look at this room real quick. I'm going to assume those are not necessarily human-sized chairs. Although you never know, the chairs could be for the raptors, while the dragons would just pull the d the winged ones, rather, would just pull their chairs out of the way and just sit their butts down on the floor. 
It would explain why the booths aren't actually booths, and instead also just have regular chairs in them. Ugh, finally. I can't stand that guy being on my tail all the dang time. I say it's for our own security. It does seem rather strange that they need someone following us everywhere. Maybe he just likes you a lot. Oh yeah, and Rua points out you need tail space for the Reptory ones. Hence why the chairs have openings like that, I guess. Okay, what do I want to choose here? A part of me wants to crack a joke. You know what? I'm gonna make the joke. We are approached by an individual who appeared to be the waitress at the cafe. She was an interesting looking dragon who, unlike the others I had seen so far, was more akin to a wyvern, possessing two rather large wings as her forelimbs, which resembled those of an oversized bat. Neat! Oh, it's the humans! Ah, oh, I love your look! I should consider the goggles look. No, but I'm already wearing glasses. When I was a kid, though, I was definitely into the goggles look. Partly inspired by Gadget from Rescue Rangers. Rura says goggles can be glasses. Yeah, and I'd have to wear them constantly. My vision... sucks. Like, if I take off my glasses right now, I can't even tell she's wearing goggles. That is how bad my vision is. Anyway, oh, it's the humans! Oh, it's a dragon! Or maybe, wait, where? I don't know. Both of these are really good. Ooh, tough choice. I'm not gonna be sarcastic. That's kind of rude. Wait, where? That's a good one. Welcome to our establishment. My name's Aideen, and I'll be your wait waitress today. What can I bring you to? A hug? I want to I wanna be hugged by those wings. I don't think that'll be an option, though. Still, writing your name down. I don't like coffee. Scrambled eggs with bacon. Today's special. I gotta know what today's special is. Yeah, me too. Just make it quick. Sure thing. Two specials coming right up. What do you suppose their money looks like? As I was saying, if you look at the big picture, don't you think there's just something off about this whole place? Where is it really? If this is supposed to be a completely separate place from Earth or even a different dimension, some things just don't add up. Don't you think so too? <laughs> I'm definitely liking some of the options this game is giving me. I mean, I certainly don't think it. You know what? I'm choosing it. Let me just grab my tinfoil hat real quick. I've been here much longer than you have been. Maybe you'll see soon enough. I can't really say much more with you-know-who over there. He's probably listening to us right now.
He doesn't seem so bad to me. When I let my gaze wander, I saw that Maverick was looking in my direction. Our eyes met briefly, his expression not showing any discernible emotion, while I wondered whether it had been... It had just been a coincidence, or if he really was able to hear us from the distance. As an aside, there are going to be kind of dating elements in this game. I'm not entirely sure if I'll really try to get into those dating situations, but we'll see what happens. I do have some theories, and if I'm right, we might be in trouble. What kind of trouble? What are you talking about? Shh, be quiet. I'll let you know more as soon as I can. But for now, let's just play along. After all, we already have one of these babies. He patted the generator's box for emphasis. And Maddie says, I'd be horrible for that. I'd want to smooch all the dragons. Well, if you are interested in playing the game, it's available on various platforms. It's available on Steam, Switch, Xbox. I don't know if it's available on, like, PlayStation or not, but it's available on a lot of places. Uh, there will be a link somewhere. I forgot to grab a link, but eventually there will be a link. Especially at YouTube. If you're watching this at YouTube, there will be a link. As an aside, Maddie, if you do play this game, I would definitely be interested in watching your playthrough and seeing how things play out with different options. Anyway, generators. God knows we need them. Oh, there she comes. The female returned, astounding me with her ability to balance the dishes on the edges of her wings. Well, I suppose if you're born with them, um, you would have plenty of practice. She placed her forelimb on the table and proceeded to move the dishes from her wings to us with a gentle push of her snout. There you go. Watch out, it's hot. I am not saying this. I'm gonna say thanks. You're welcome. Apparently, today's special consisted of an odd-looking fish of some sort. I was a little hesitant to try it, but considering the steam coming from it, it was probably better to wait a few minutes anyway. I wonder what kind of fish this world has. It would make sense that fish would be a thing. Gotta be some sort of aquatic life. When the waitress brought out meals to the two dragons across the cafe and exchanged a few words with them, Reza leaned forward and whispered something to me. I'll send you a letter with a coded message later. You'll know what to do. Will I? Reza rose from his seat before he made it known to me that he still had a few things to do and I left the restaurant, followed shortly after by the larger of the two dragons. But you haven't even touched your... fish. I wasn't in a hurry, so I spent a few more minutes in contemplation while I looked out the window. Not, visit, not that this whole situation was already bizarre enough, there was also now the vague sense of danger conveyed by Reza's earlier words. I did not even have an idea what kind of threat might be lurking out there. Eventually, I took a bite of my somewhat unusual breakfast. While I already thought the smell was quite peculiar, the taste had been even worse. I imagined it might be the kind of delicacy that had an acquired taste, one that I certainly hadn't acquired yet. I decided to get outside before it was too too late. Are you done? I sure am. How'd you like it? I'll just say it's probably not for me. Probably gonna want to get used to it, though. I imagine there's gonna be a lot of odd-tasting food in this world. 
and you wouldn't be the only one to say that. You better wait outside just in case it decides to come up again. Achievement unlocked. Bravery. You tried the odd-looking fish. Sure thing. I certainly hope it doesn't come up again. I've already dealt with the potential of upchucking once on this adventure. I stepped outside, taking in the scenery of this strangely familiar world. In the short time I was here, I had already found the similar similarities between their world and our own utterly fascinating. Indeed, let's take a look at the scenery again here. I mean, it certainly looks like a normal place. A little old-fashioned, but I kind of like old-fashioned. I certainly wouldn't mind living in a village like this for real. Especially if it's full of dragons. After all, we were talking about an unmapped place with a never-before-seen form of life. As far as discoveries were concerned, even something as simple as a new unicellular organism or even bacteria would have been remarkable. Hopefully my immune system is able to handle those new unicellular organisms and bacteria. Yet here I was, standing in the middle of a village evidently built by this race of intelligent talking dragons with a society not unlike our own. Reza didn't seem to share the same interest and instead was more smitten with the generator, but given our reasons for coming here in the first place, I couldn't blame him for his enthusiasm being focused on something else. Rura says, I hope their immune systems can handle your bacteria as well. Very true. It's kind of a real threat when you think about it, and kind of a paradoxical threat when it comes to visiting extraterrestrial planets in the future. It's like, how do you visit them and not die of disease instantly? Whatever. Good news is, this is a video game. My thoughts were interrupted as something suddenly zipped past me just a little too close, causing me to stumble back. It was a rather small dragon with a bag clamped on its maw who apparently had somewhere to be. And, and she's pink. I definitely approve of the color. I want to be a pink dragon. Admittedly, technically speaking, I could be a pink dragon. I could be a pink raccoon dragon. I actually did consider it. But something about the natural gray fur just appealed to me more. Red hair aside, I like the red hair look. I regained my footing and watched as it disappeared into the distance. Even though I'd seen enough dragons to recognize their variations in size, color, and other attributes, I guess this one must have been a juvenile of its species. It is also interesting that it has to carry things around in its mouth. Imagine being a creature that has to do that. Shortly afterwards, Sebastian joined me outside, leaving or having taken care of the tab. I'm glad I don't have to worry about paying for anything myself. Though I will try not to take advantage of the situation too much. I gave her a generous tip on your behalf. I hope you don't mind. Oh, kind of a tough one. Of course not, as long as I don't have to pay the bill. I mean, that is my immediate concern because I don't necessarily have money for this world. Hmm. <laughs> I also don't want to come off as sounding greedy, though, so this one is also kind of tough. As long as I don't have to pay the bill, or how nice of you. I 
I mean, I'm probably going to go ahead and say this one because I'd probably say it without thinking because I don't have the money. Don't worry about it. In any case, now that you've given us the PDA and Reza has the generator, you're free for today. So, if you want to go anywhere in particular, let me know, or I could show you around town. I was tempted to be given a tour, but considering Reza wor Reza's words, I wanted to be careful and not stray too far without knowing more about this world first. I think I'll stay home for today. I still have to get used to everything, you know? I'll just accompany you back then. And there we are. Home sweet home. For now, at least. Well, if you need anything, I'll be outside until my shift ends. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks. See you tomorrow. See ya! I hadn't really looked at the apartment much, so I spent the rest of the day investigating it and relaxing. I considered checking out some of the phone numbers Remy had left me, but I thought it was better to keep a low profile for now. I found the kitchen fully stocked with plenty of groceries, though the variety was wasted on me. I hadn't been a particularly great cook in the first place. True story, I'm trying to learn though. But what was more, I didn't even recognize some of the things I found there. Whether they were edibles that we had back home that I just didn't know about, or something completely alien, I wasn't sure. But I didn't want to take the risk of eating anything I didn't know. After all, it was possible that some of the comestibles might be fine for them to eat, but still be poisonous to us. I was also glad to find a shelf that was filled to the brim with a variety of books. I do like reading. While I found the subject matter of man, myth, or reality to be quite intriguing, I had to give up after just a few pages due to its, its exceptionally dry writing style, which I wasn't inclined to enjoy at the moment. In the end, I settled for an adventure novel about a dragon archaeologist who stumbles upon the remains of a long-lost human civilization, after which she is hunted by an evil organization who wants to use the found magical artifacts for its own nefarious purposes. While entertaining, I had to admit that it reminded me a little too much of the trashy novels we had at our we had at home. I suddenly found it amusing that certain tropes were not really unique to us as a species, though I wondered whether this kind of literature had fallen into disfavor here as it had back where I had come from. Maddie says, you know what? I'd read it. Yeah, me too. I was reading a particularly exciting scene in which the hero, Sheridan, uses one of the magical artifacts shaped like a pair of human hands holding a scepter with a globe at the top to prevent herself from being crushed and ground into a bloody pulp by an ancient human temple's moving walls when I suddenly heard the doorbell ring. I probably don't need to remember that name, but I'm going to write it down. You know what? There's a reason why I chose to play this game, and it's not just that this game features a ton of dragons. It's that they're freaking cute! Hello there! Would you please sign here? I'm not signing, signing away my rights with this, am I? I've got a letter for you that requires signature confirmation. I see. Looking over the clipboard the small dragon was holding up to me, I saw that the sender of the letter in question was Reza. There you go. Maddie says, can I just hug him, like, for the rest of the day? Uh, I so hope the game gives me that option at some point. I'm Lauren, by the way. 
Would you mind if I ask you a few questions? Sure, let me write you down, down your name. Adorable blue male dragon. What is this about? I'm just making small talk. Wait a minute. I recognize you. You tried to do the same thing with Reza. Maybe I should report you to your superiors for your inappropriate behavior towards your clients. But it's important! Please, just let me talk to Erica for a few minutes. You know how it is. If you want an interview with one of the humans, you'll have to get permission from the proper authorities. Give me the option to say yes. Help me out here, Erica. As an ambassador, you care about the accurate portrayal of humans in the media, don't you? Then you should talk to me. Otherwise, someone else will fill in the blanks, and who knows what they will come up with. Let me show you something. The small dragon opened his bag, rummaging through a number of letters and small packages. Huh. I think I lost it. Anyway, I wanted to show you some pictures of what people think humans look like. On some of them, they have like four heads and look nothing like you. It's crazy. You know, we have some similar art of you guys. What are you, Lorem? A reporter? No, I'm just... Do you want me to remove him, Erica? Is he what it... Is what he is saying true? Yeah, I guess. I see. That sounds pretty interesting, though. Alright, you can leave your number here, and maybe I'll call you later. But that's all I can promise. Call him... In all caps. Thank you! Thank you so much! He quickly produces a small sheet of paper and scribbled his number on it. Afterwards, he sheepishly presented it with both hands. Alright, you got what you wanted. Off you go now. A part of me wasn't sure whether to trust him or not, but, um, I trust him now. Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. I guess that should be all. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Right. With all the commotion, I almost forgot that I was also still holding Reza's letter. Within the plain envelope was a similarly plain sheet of paper with his handwriting. When I started reading, however, I saw that his wording was so full of the blip, so full of the pleasantries I knew he hated that I assumed every word of it was faked to was faked as to conceal its true intent. He did mention I'd know what to do, but I was unsure of how I was supposed to decode the letter's secret message. I didn't remember ever having a conversation about the, this topic with him, yet he still relied on me to remember whatever it was that I was missing, or he thought I would just be able to figure it out on my own. This is what it said. Hello, my dear friend. I hope this letter reached you swiftly and in good condition. Unfortunately, we were not able to catch up earlier, so I wanted to write you this letter. How have you been these last few years? What have you been doing? How's the family? I feel like there is so much we should talk about since we have not seen each other much recently. At least we have a chance to do so in this form. Quite an exciting venture we are now on now, right? How have you liked it here so far? Made any dragon friends yet? Haha. <laughs> Anyways, I will be looking forward to your reply soon. I am not entirely sure yet what sort of code I should be looking for. It's not the first letter of every line. It's not the last letter of every line either. 
Then you just know, haha, -ha, being in there must be important. Best regards, Riza. As an aside, I'm glad that this lot, this game presents these walls of texts pieces at a time. It is not so imposing whenever you're only presented it pieces at a time. Various things came to mind. Only written, reading certain words or letters was one that I thought of immediately, but I couldn't make out anything after trying to find a system with its array of letters and lines. Maybe I had to look more carefully. Hmm. I don't know his meaning. Read between the lines? I'm not good at reading between the lines. Not when it comes to conspiracies, anyway. Let's look elsewhere for hints. Or maybe he referred to the fact that we were both given an apartment. Considering the things they provided for us, maybe I just had to find the right object to decode the message. There were many everyday items here, though, and of course I still had no idea what in particular I was looking for. Well, I was just doing some reading. Let's look at the bookshelf. Although... No, let's look in the bathroom. I'm curious what dragon toilets look like. Well, there it is over there, I think. Here, let's hide this. Hmm. Never really thought of that. Not having the tank sticking up. That would give you room for your tail. Rura says no reflection. On the one hand, good. I don't want it to be spoiled what I look like. Whether I'm male or female, so we can just assume that I'm female. At the same time, huh, I'm a vampire. So wait. Is the toilet inside the shower? Ha! Huh. No shampoo to be found anywhere, of course. And no hint either, just some body wash. In the cabinet, no razors. There are some pain meds, though. We'll go ahead and take some. I'm not sure if this is a good idea, but here we go. Wait, I, I meant taking with me. And I can do it some more? Okay, we are not going in that direction. Let's continue exploration. Let's look in the kitchen. Look in the fridge. Plenty of stuff in here. Let's look at the meat. It is just a slab of meat. Nothing special about it. Look at the milk. Pasteurize. At least they've got that down. What are the cows in this world like? Crack open an egg and look inside. Okay. Nope, just a regular egg. And I can do it again? Do I run out of eggs if I keep doing this? Huh. Those were all of them. <laughs> Guess I just wasted a perfectly good batch of eggs. 
Achievement unlocked. Oviside. <laughs> okay, look at that container. It's an unlabeled container with some sort of white liquid inside. Well, here goes nothing. It's salty. Achievement unlocked, Daredevil. You drink a mystery liquid. Rura says those pain meds may have an achievement like that too. Yeah, but I'm not sure that's an achievement I actually want to go for, because uh, the last thing I want to do is go into some drug coma. And considering we are playing a visual novel where bad things are probably going to happen, let's not, te let's not tempt fate with that. This is look in the pantry. Just some fruits and veggies here. What should I look at? The date. If I put it on the floor and then step on it, what would happen? I'd be going on a date. But I'm just. But no, there's no hint here. Fig. What do I know about figs? Quite a bit, actually. Things are ripe with history and still enjoy some cultural significance, especially in religious circles. For example, they are the leaves of, with which Adam and Eve covered themselves up in the Bible's book of Genesis. It also happens to be the kind of tree Buddha achieved enlightenment under. Not only that, but it is also mentioned in Greek, Greek mythology. Isn't it fascinating? But wait, there's more! The influence of figs also extends towards words, phrases, and sayings we still use today. Take the word psychophant, for example, which comes from the, a Greek expression meaning someone who shows the fig, which was a vulgar gesture at the time, or I don't give a fig, which of course is a fig or a speech. It might as well have been said that the influence of figs is as far reaching as its fruit is succulent. Figuratively speaking, that is. I'm afraid nothing of this actually helps with Reza's letter, though. Huh. Go fig. So they have pears, grapes, and lemons in this world. There are two of them. What a nice pear. I am enjoying the dialogue in this game. I just want you all to know that. Let's look at the grape. So, Daddy Grape finds his kid crying and asks, What's going on, kid? What's what's wrong, kid? But through all the tears, the kid couldn't get a single word out. Eventually, Daddy had enough, so he said, Stop what... Uh, no, I won't say it. It wasn't a good joke anyway. Anybody know where this joke was going? Achievement unlocked. Fruitarian. Oh, Maddie says stop whining. Oh, come on, that was a good one. Okay, let's look at the lemon. Lemons. Lemons. Lemons! Of course! Why didn't I realize it sooner? Lemon juice is about to, the simplest way to write a hidden message using household items. We learned about that in chemistry. Ah, oh, darn it. I had a feeling that coming to the kitchen would progress the plot, but I was hoping it wouldn't so that I could also investigate the bookshelf. And the most boring, okay, we learned about that in chemistry, in the most boring detail, of course. A message written in lemon juice on paper becomes just about invisible to the naked eye when dried, but after heating it gently, oxidation occurs, making the message visible. I was sitting next to him in class when we learned that. He made a joke about using the method to cheat on the next test, and I replied by saying he'd have to bring an iron. Had he really expected me to remember a random chemistry class that happened years ago? But then I did remember it, after all. 
Meet me at the portal tonight, 10 p.m., was all the message said. I wasted a good amount of time, but I still had some left before I'd have to go out to meet Reza, so I decided to make some lunch. I could have made some scrambled eggs if I hadn't broken them all earlier. I'm glad the game remembers that. Afterwards, I resumed reading my book about the continuing adventures of Sheridan and her exploits in destroying cultural artifacts. Unsurprisingly, it came to a happy end, with the evil organization stopped in its tracks, at least for now. I thought the ending was deliberately left open for ambiguity, ambiguity but when I turned the page and saw the advertisement for the next entry in this apparent long-running series of books, I realized all of this had just been a ploy to set up the inevitable sequel. Luckily, the disappointment didn't last long, as I had to get going to meet Reza at the portal. Okay. Exploring the house took a lot longer than I thought. I meant to go on a little break a bit ago. So I'll go ahead on a, go on a break right now. And when we come back, we'll see what Reza wants. And... I bet things are about to start being not so happy-go-lucky in the story.